Hello. We meet again. Still waiting for the TTC? I don't seem to be able to depart. It seems we are at a bit of an impasse, existential or otherwise. Please use smaller words. What I mean is, the TTC seems to be stuck in the mud in terms of how to next expand. For example, I know that you and Rob Ford like subways. Yes, we like the big underground choo-choos. They are the only trains not made of gravy. Um, okay. And, respectively, I and many other Torontonians like both modern streetcars and LRT as they have been deployed in other cities. Respect is for taxpayers. And yet here we are, waiting for the TTC, because nothing is getting done. Over the past decades there have been too many cancelled projects to mention, while little has taken their place. How do we move forward? I like to move forward in my SUV, when the light is still red. That way I get a head start. We must find a plan, that can accommodate all views. I understand that you, and Rob Ford prefer the comfort and proven track record of high capacity heavy rail subways. They are easy to use, and to understand, and do not create surface traffic to slow down your beer run. Labat Blue is yummy. And of course some of the fervor for subways comes from a desire, to fix the completely idiotic Shepherd line, which the TTC built as a separate subway, that requires a transfer to go anywhere. In any other city in the known universe this would have been built as a far more useful spur off the young line. I thought spurs were for horses. And the elevator demonstration train that became the Scarborough Rapid Transit line is aging, and needs to be replaced. Maybe it could be replaced by a monorail. Springfield has a monorail, as do Broadway, Ogdenville, and North Heaverbrook. Oh. You do realize that was an episode of The Simpsons? And Homer crashed it? Look, you really need to stop getting your transit information from cartoons. Dope. But as we have already discussed, underground subways are very expensive. Light rail transit is a proven and less expensive technology that can still move decent numbers of people, especially in less dense parts of the city that do not have the ridership for subways and have space for a separate right of way. But Transit City was designed by socialists. There are some flaws to the program, but you have to admit it can work in some circumstances where subways cannot be afforded. Please don't tell me about Seattle and Phoenix and Charlotte again. In any case, I can see that the LRT proposed for Shepherd East will block future subway expansion in that direction, creating some further tension among subway supporters. Which is why I voted for Rob Ford. He will demolish Transit City like a stack of pancakes. Not likely, unless the entire city council joins the Tea Party. Still, a solution must be found that solves all of these problems and conflicts. I think I know what to do. I don't care. But I suspect you will tell me anyway. Step 1, we build Transit City. As we've already discussed, there are many good reasons to implement this kind of LRT technology and the establishment of a starter network will lead to future growth, including a possible SRT conversion. And the mostly underground Eglinton LRT is practically a subway so everyone can support it. As long as you put a Tim Hortons above each station. Step 2, the streetcar network is brought up to modern standards. Without doing much to the tracks, or spending many dollars, travel times could be immensely improved with changes to fare payment, number of stops, better managing the right of way and so on. There is no reason Toronto can't be more like Melbourne, Australia, especially with the new vehicle order. Foster's is Australian for beer. Step 3, when money can be found from the higher levels of government, who together fund the TTC less than any other transit system on the continent, a subway extension should indeed be built on Shepherd, but going west, not east. My mind is blown. Linking together the Shepherd Stubway and Downsview Station with a track junction will solve many problems. It creates an easy way for young line traffic to cross over to the less used spot on a line with only one transfer. It can be built in an area that is still underbuilt, easing construction and enhancing future development revenues. And it turns the Shepherd line into the really useful branch line it always should have been. I like branch lines. Thomas the Tank Engine has one, and he is a really useful engine. Again with the cartoons. Anyway, this means that every other train on the spot idle line can be split between going to Vaughan and to Don Mills. 
not only does this work well with actual passenger demand, but ensures that some capacity will be saved for travelers within Toronto, rather than having fully packed trains enter the city from Vaughan. It would be very similar to how the number 3 subway branch in New York acts as a relief valve for Manhattan commuters, by alternating with the number 2 route coming in from the Bronx. Again you mention New York. Is this near East York? And of course other necessary steps, like improvements to an integration with commuter rail, the airport rail link, bus rapid transit and other projects could be developed in parallel, as funding allows. I feel wool being lifted from over my eyes, like taking off a hockey sweater. This is the only way to save Transit City, the streetcars, and the entire transit future of Toronto under the subway mandate of Rob Ford. You talk a good game, but as a latte sipping downtown elite, how can I trust you? Don't you all work for the union? I like the leaves. Okay then, we can be friends. Let's go tell Mayor Ford your plan. Screw waiting for the TTC, we can walk.